Hi, I'm Susan, and this is Susan Stanley Stitch in Time, a very short tips and tricks episode where I'm going to talk to you about choosing and using a thimble. Thimbles are a love-hate item, but a really necessary tool, and once you learn to use it and become comfortable with it, you will be so glad you put it on your finger, especially for that thick, heavy quilting and things you're doing with lots of layers. So get your thimbles ready that you have, if you have any, uh, and watch this and see if there's some tip that I can give you that makes your life using a thimble a little bit easier. So picking a thimble is very personal and it's normal to resist. It's, they're uncomfortable when you first start using them for most people. It's a new experience. It's like wearing a new ring. If it doesn't fit quite right, it feels like it's pinching your finger or it's going to fall off. It's just awkward. It's unnatural. But I guarantee you the joy and the benefits of using a thimble after you've learned to use this tool effectively and correctly is going are going it's going to make your stitching life so much better and I'm talking about for hand sewing I don't know many cross stitchers who need a thimble however I will show you one that I periodically use when I'm doing full coverage so how to choose your tool instead of pinching the needle let me just show you here I'm gonna give you a little demo at the end too but instead of pinching the needle and poking and pinching the needle, you can easily glide the needle through and push with your thimble. Uh, it eases up the, the task of stitching and gives you protection and the full use of the thimble on your third finger, on your dominant hand, is, is what you typically do. Now, that's not to say some people don't use other fingers, and I'm, I'm just telling you a very traditional way to start testing and fitting yourself for a thimble. This is for someone who's never used a thimble before. It gives you agility, control, and speed, and precision. And the key to loving a thimble is finding one that works. Unfortunately, it's trial and error. And so what I want to show you today is is some of the pro or some of the pros and cons of the thimbles I have and I've used so you can at least narrow down your search a tiny bit. I have tried almost everything on the market. Um, okay, so like I said, you wear it on the third finger of your dominant hand, and the type might depend on the task, and we'll talk about that. In a, in a little bit later too, but the fit is what matters. It's always about how it fits. It needs to be just right, not too loose, not too tight. And so the best way, and I'll show you using my, my favorite thimble right now is this one from Thimble Lady. Um, thimbles for you, pardon me, Thimbles for you. It's my favorite thimble, and you put it on your finger. This one is a Taylor's thimble I'll talk about in a minute. You put it on your finger, and you just hold your hand upside down and kind of gently wiggle your fingers to see if it falls off. And if it feels like, okay, it's kind of fitting nicely like a ring would, not pinching your hand, you know, circulation and, and everything, you probably have a good fit. Um, if you are going to stores and trying thimbles out, you might want to consider bringing a waxer or some thread conditioner with you because sometimes the thimble doesn't fit quite right and, and all it needs is a little wax on your finger to give it a little bit of a grip. It's, it's the right fit, but maybe your hand is just maybe a tiny bit, you know, swollen or maybe it's a tiny bit, you know, sweat hot out and it feels kind of like slippery and clammy and so putting that on will help the knee, the thimble just snug onto your finger and give it a little resistance and grip. So that's a tip and that's something that you can use. You know, I always have my, my thread conditioner with my sewing supplies and so it's there when I need it for that or for my thread. Okay, 
Let's look at styles of thimbles. Now they're made out of a variety of materials and I'm choosing to show you different styles rather than the materials, uh, than breaking them down by material because the styles uh, will help you see that they each have kind of a different purpose or focus. The traditional thimbles, and they come in all different materials, and you, you can start out with ones that are inexpensive and just see if, if they work for you. This is just the traditional, uh, this one I believe is tin thimble. It's not expensive. It's something you can pick up for a relatively small price. Um, it has the, the little divots in the top and on the side so you can push the eye of the needle from the side or the top. I have stopped using this style but this is what I started with. There's another one very similar. It has a brass top because if you're pushing from the top the eye of the needle if you can believe it even if this is sterling silver the eye of the needle will eventually poke holes into the top of the thimble and you'll get a surprise one day when the needle is poking you. Um, this is a quilting thimble. It has this ring here that protects the needle from slipping down the side. If you're doing repetitive stitching, the eye of the needle will, will be caught by this, this ridge on the edge. It also has divots in the side, but then it has this slippery part here and it has divots in the top. Those divots are important because that is what gives you uh, security to know that the eye of the needle is gonna stay in place as you're pushing the fabric through. Now this is an option that's relatively inexpensive. I believe it's made by Dritz. And the, the nice thing about trying this thimble if you think you want a top to push from the top because you don't want to push from the side. The needle will go, the eye of the needle will go through this rubber. You can, you know, pull this out and adjust it. It's like, it's like putting on a bathing suit really. <laughs> you just tuck your finger in there. Um, and then you're going to have this top to push from and there's a little bit of play because this is not metal all the way down so you can see there's movement. You don't get that claustrophobic feeling on your finger if you're starting out and you you're just like i just can't stand it i feel like my finger is suffocating i think this might be a good one to try um, and again it has the divots at the top all right so that is a traditional top covered thimble where the top is enclosed let's move those to the side now so there are options of thimbles for people with long fingernails. And this is one it's made by Roxanne. That'll focus. Okay, it's worn like this. So your fingernail goes out past the opening in the thimble. Now I find these to be very um, kind of freeing feeling. They don't feel claustrophobic as long as they fit properly. You push from this side. You have this additional lip that you know protects your fingernail but also protects your needle from slipping. So this is a good, this is a good option for those of you who have nails and They're all, those also come, the nail opening also comes in a leather form. Let's see if you can see that. There's an opening right there for your nail. These are nice, but they don't have any kind of a metal plate in there to protect your needle eye from poking you. So eventually that space will wear, wear down uh, so you just need to be careful, but these are really nice if you're if you're using this for hand piecing and then move on to something a little more substantial for the quilting through all the layers. It's a good option to have. All right, and then that one was made out of leather, and there are a few. Uh, this one was made out of leather. There are a few other leather options. This one's actually a handmade one by a friend, and you, you know this. This can wear over time onto your finger and, and feel really comfortable 
just protecting it but again you've got the issue of no metal in there to protect the eye from poking through and if it twists at all I have amazingly had the eye catch up into that little hole there so but it is an option and if you're if you're not if you're feeling like the metal is just too confining constricting and then there's this finger caught which uh you know in some it looks like it would be more claustrophobic or i don't know intrusive or all-encompassing but actually because it fits down over your entire finger you really forget about it a little quicker uh, i know someone who strictly hand quilts with this thimble or this finger caught and swears by it so that is an option out there as well um, and last of all there are the little uh, thimble dots I do have some of these on my web store because they are a very inexpensive option if you know where you push with your finger you just place the dot right there and it's got adhesive that lasts for about five or six up to maybe ten uses you're not going to have it fall off you will forget that there's, it's on your finger over time uh, it's great for hand piecing English paper piecing it's just not quite strong enough for me for quilting it but if this is all you can tolerate because your finger is still free and you just have this little dot on there to to kind of be conscious of then by all means try this and you can just store it right back on the sheet it's reusable it's moleskin and it all those dots also come in a plastic form and they have little ridges and they stick onto your finger same thing these you I notice I actually notice it's there a little more than than the other Thank you for joining me today. I hope you saw a little bit of the variety of thimbles that are available and maybe the, the pros and cons of each. In my opinion, I've, you can see, tried many different thimbles. I've, over the years, changed my methodology and what I love. Uh, it's kind of an, uh, it's like shoes, you know. Sometimes you just need a different style or a different footbed to make them work and that's the same as a thimble you're you're outfitting your finger uh, so I hope this made it a little bit easier for you to try a thimble and be successful with the thimble and as always it's an it's not something that you naturally love the first time you use it um, please let me know your thoughts please let me know if I can answer any questions my email is Susan Stanley, SMS Quilter, excuse me. My email is smsquilter at comcast.net. My contact page on my website is www.susanstanleystitchintime.com. And I would be happy to walk you through any concerns or questions that you have in your journey of picking a thimble that works for you. Until next time. Make time for stitching.